Excuse me. Who in here is a high value virgin? This guy is literally a moron. Is anybody in here a virgin? I'm not allowed to ask if you're a virgin. Are you a virgin? Are you a virgin? You know, people often come up to me and they say, Tate, you're the greatest human being to ever walk the face of the earth. How do you do it? And I say, it's in my DNA. I'm a top G. Can you lower your Do apologize to all my, uh, to my lady fans out there. That is horrible. That is fucking horrible. See, this right here is a piece of mail, right? It's a piece of shit mail. But this mail right here was commanding me. Me. Something is coming. Something big. Uh. Say cheese. Say cheese. What did they say to you? Say cheese, my friend Lucy. <laughs> got it? I got it. Well, this is a first for the channel. I'm talking about beta male Andrew Tate. Never thought I'd see that, but something that Mr. Tate has done in the last 24 hours has made me cringe beyond belief. Kung Fu hot dog. Hua! Greetings from the UK. Ooh. Fancy. I'm actually on his official website right now, cobratate.com, because I guess Cobra Kai was taken. And you're presented with four programs. One is the Hustlers University, because that already sounds like a big pile of wank. 4.0, and it's going to cost you the princely sum of $50 a month. But now we get to the actual... One of the main culprits of my video today, which is Tate's War Room. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the War Room. And as you can see here, it's priced at nearly $8,000. Now, I'm assuming this is a one-off payment. I can't imagine it's a payment every month. If it is, it's absolutely atrocious and extortionate. And if you don't know about Andrew Tate, He's this fake Muslim who lives under house arrest in Romania. I want to say fake Muslim because apparently when you're experiencing a mental breakdown, the only religion that's worth converting to is Islam. Uh, okay, right. Next, please. I would love for it to be after I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a video that I found here by Mustafa No Man explains in further detail what actually happened. It's pretty... So I told them yes that I have $1,000 and then they asked me to give them my email and they said that they would be in contact. And right after that, I kid you not, the first message they sent me was, you're too late. What do you mean? And the next message that they sent me is going to blow your mind. They said that the war room is now 7,979 US dollars. Okay, well, this doesn't make any sense. I told them how come the website just said it was five grand. And then they said that they told me yesterday to be fast. I have no idea what they're talking about because I never tried joining before. Anyways, I had to use my brother's computer with a different email. An instant red flag alert already, isn't it, guys? Like, holy shit. Oh, Andrew Tate is just out to extort money from his millions of cuck fans. That's all it is. And I got access to the war room for the original price of $5,454. By the way, I was sent to a non-disclosure agreement, which I had to sign before they let me in. This agreement basically said that if I were to reveal anything inside of the war room, they can sue me for millions of dollars. So I'm going to try my best to showcase what's going on in there without showing the whole thing itself. How can they sue you for millions of dollars if you don't have millions of dollars at hand? So that's a veiled cucky threat already, isn't it? So I signed the document and sent it back and I finally entered the war room. Two thousand years later. <laughs> I just spent a few hours going through as much as I can inside of the war room. So let me tell you what it's like to be a member of Andrew Tate's elite society. As soon as you join, you'll have access to a private group with different sections. There is only one elite society, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Illuminati. Okay, make no mistake about it. It's not Andrew Tate. It's not anybody else. You got your fellowships, of course you do. But to say this is the only elite club of men you need to be a part of is an absolute joke. Andrew Tate empowering young men to become better men. He's not a kid of the 80s and the 70s, is he? Like I am, where you had images of strong men everywhere growing up. 
You didn't have to pay someone so many pounds or dollars a week to find out how to become a man. You actually had your father or you had strong male figures in your life that you could turn to free of charge, you know? But all this bullshit now where you're charging nearly eight grand, either it's for a year or for a month, it's absolutely, it's a joke. These sections include things where they try to help you improve in areas like business, dating, and fitness. Each one of these sections is led by an expert who shares their knowledge and experiences with the group. This is sort of similar to the real world where you would also have different professors teaching every section. In the business section, they may- Yeah, this sounds like life coaching to me. Now, I've been approached to be, uh, to be a student for a life coach, but I turned it down because when I asked, well, what does a life coach actually do? No, the actual person who tried to refer me to one, because apparently she's an insufferable cow and this life coach helped her, but he didn't help her out with her insufferability. So I guess really she ain't getting her money's worth. Mainly teach you a lot about entrepreneurship. They want you to be a genius in business, just like Andrew Tate is. And they also teach marketing and sales genius. because it goes well with entrepreneurship. The experts in the business section had a lot of knowledge and were always willing to help the members out of the group. I also got the opportunity to network with other entrepreneurs and learn from their experiences. And finally, in the dating section, which I feel is honestly a complete scam, they teach so-called dating strategies and techniques that help men improve in their dating life. I think this section is just completely unnecessary because they just overcome complicate things and make it seem like this is some sort of a challenge when in reality you just need to have courage and be able to talk to people yes and of course dating women is a bit of a headache for men these days because you just can't walk up to a lovely female at a bar or in a party and engage in conversation it might go horribly south henry cavill's talked about this before uh, again if you're at your place of work you might get on well with a female colleague you might eventually ask her out on a date or she might have the same feelings as you so you don't need to go to some friggin' dating guru who you've paid eight grand or as part of the eight grand you've paid to give you advice you don't already know it's so pathetic but of course when we get to pathetic folks the whole point about this video is this absolute monstrosity here no i'm not just talking about andrew tate but top g the wanky new comic book title from Andrew Tate. <laughs> Word. True that. True that. <laughs> Andrew Tate, the man who famously berated pop culture and people who liked it. I'll get to that point in a minute by launching his very own comic book title. Hmm, gee, I wonder who might have influenced him. I wonder who actually has comic book credibility and was able to launch their very successful title and earn millions from it. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about and I'll get to that person in a minute. But the front art cover for Top G looks like, not, you know what, I think a, a six-year-old could do a better illustration than that. And I'm pretty sure there are gifted six-year-olds out there who can be a much more better comic book artist than whoever did this. I think this comic book art actually drawn by a computer because since Mr. Tate is so obsessed with the Matrix and artificial intelligence, I would not be surprised if somebody <laughs> who's not real actually drew this. It's, it's pathetic. The same hypocrite who once talked about pop culture as being a place for nerdum, that he didn't understand it. If you live streamed a video game, you weren't getting any value in life and you're wasting time. Pretty much like watching porn for a few hours, Andrew. You know, you're passing time, you're unzipping your trousers, you're doing what comes naturally. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much the same thing, right? Although, is that more acceptable? In a world enslaved by the Matrix, one man stands as a beacon of truth and liberation. I will not have nerds as children, which is a strange opening line. I think he meant to say, I will not have my children as nerds. And he refuses for them to carry the name of Tate if they become <gasps> shock horror a nerd as opposed to, I don't know, a future sex offender maybe. Um, but if my son is a nerd and one of us has to die, I'm going to challenge him to a game of Mortal Kombat. So you've dissed people who live stream Mortal Kombat, which by the way is going to become a very woke title this year. Uh, but you're going to challenge him over a pop culture iconic video game of Mortal Kombat to see which one of you is a nerd or not. So it's kind of a really weird 
thing to say and then you're kind of going back against yourself it's so pathetic and uh, it's breaking illusions folks because the whole irony is Andrew Tate is an illusion himself he might be AI for all I know I mean David Blaine could pull that trick off with his eyes closed okay you know magic? okay okay there's okay. your magic okay it's coming the magic is coming all right that's right but we're talking about Andrew Tate he's no David Blaine Andrew Tate gives you fake advice. He's making you think, he's using that placebo effect where you're giving so much money to his cause that given that amount of money, you think you're getting back value and in reality, you're not. You're just fooling yourself into thinking that what you're being delivered is going to be life affirming. Like I said, I don't need to go to some beta cuck gym instructor to tell me what my nutrition is meant to be and how I can improve my body and get the best body possible. I eat what I want, I train what I want, and as long as I'm doing those things in tandem, I'm good. And you know who told me that? A doctor I didn't have to pay money to to tell me that advice in the first place. I don't know what's going to happen here. So if you look in the basket, it says zero, right? I haven't actually made any purchases at the moment. I've done a pretend purchase. $97 for something that's not even premium quality. It just looks like it flew out of a baboon's ass. Now, if I click on this, this is so weird. So already, the basket is telling me I've got three orders for this comic. I don't. I've tried to delete the orders before, and it wouldn't let me do that for some odd reason. But if you want to purchase the comic, I bet you it's going to get... Oh, right. It doesn't go to four. But if you purchase, purchase now. What happens? You see? It goes to four comics. Now, obviously, if you subtract three... It's about $116. That's, that's, that's including the shipping to get your low tier, very mid edition of Top G in the post. Andrew Tate is not a comic book fan. He's a pretender like he's a pretend Muslim. So definitely wouldn't trust this guy six days from Sunday. Of course, now we go to this pathetic trailer here on Twitter from DNG Comics. <laughs> You admit it's good. Just uh, say it's good. It's good. Yeah, Christian's like, nah, nah, Andrew, this is really shit. But uh, thanks for forcing me into thinking it's really good. I bet these guys couldn't tell you a single comic book character if their life depended on it. If there was a gun pointed to their head and say, Andrew, Christian, give us 10 famous comic book characters and you've got 10 seconds to do so. They'll probably stop at Batman and Superman and then shit their pants right afterwards. But of course, we get to Eric July, the man, the CEO behind Ripperverse. You saw that pathetic advert before for Top G. This is Eric's ISOM 2 campaign where he actually got a team of animators in to promote the comic. Have you a look. Know, I have one condition. Yeah. No more quitting. Time is a gift, I say. What are you gonna do with yours? And that right there is how you do it, Mr. Eric July. Mr. July is a very eloquent man, very well-spoken individual. I'm a big fan of his anyway. He's not afraid to go out there and deal with the bullshit, his detractors. He even gets them on to call him in on his live streams and he still berates them. It's hilarious to watch. Uh, the man has no fear. He loves heavy metal music and he he's a rapper, he's a singer. He, he's, he's good, I like him. And the fact that he's now invaded the space that DC and Marvel Comics have destroyed by creating his own title it's a great time folks if you're a creator and you got the resources you got josiah on epic verse making his own short films to be released on youtube because right now hollywood is afraid of ai taking over it's a real serious threat ladies and gentlemen and i think it's absolutely hilarious in fact i've got ai infiltrating my ecosystem online um, but the funny thing is ai is telling me you like beautiful women well Here's a few select choices for you, Mr. King. Which one would you like? Funny enough, a lot of them are all Caucasian, artificially created women for my liking. It's hilarious, but it's very telling that 
AI thinks or knows you love beautiful images of women, but you got the trans female activists who again aren't real women telling you don't worship females in video games or in any other form of entertainment. We are what you need in your life right now. This is the future generation. They feel so threatened by it and films like Sound of Freedom because they know people are gravitating towards those and not listening to them because they're not real. They're part of Andrew Tate Matrix. It is. It's all part of that Matrix hive mind that Andrew Tate has created. But <laughs> unwittingly, you got the trans activists in that Matrix as well. And as far as I'm concerned, they can stay in that corner of the world and maybe the UFOs that, the, or that Congress has been having those conversations about this week can swoop down, take them away and leave us normal folk to get back to a hopefully progressive lifestyle. But of course, if you go to the Ripperverse right here, there's one more thing I want to talk about this. So this female character at the bottom here is Yaira and people are really getting excited about her because she's having her debut comic coming out in the near future. I think it's going to be next year we get Yaira, uh, but the Soska sisters from Hungary are writing her. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this character because I think, and people are predicting already, that she's going to outsell Isom. I think the projected pre-sales will be five to six million for Yaira alone for the first issue. You got Alpha Core coming out as well, uh, probably next year too, and people are excited about them. And I'm really excited, actually, to see how this all progresses. I mean, Eric July has been at San Diego Comic Con recently. He's teamed up with Chuck Dixon. Yeah, Chuck Dixon is now an employee of his. And they and Eric is basically learning off him the ropes about the comic book industry. So unlike Mr. Tate, Eric July actually has experience. He's a lifelong comic book fan like I am, but he's got way more knowledge than me. Uh, and you know, he's got his own warehouse where he's going to stock up these thousands of copies of Ice Number no. 2 and previous copies to ship out to his fans and people that like his comic books. Uh, but Andrew Tate is an absolute fake, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that's not revolutionary. That's not revelatory. We already know that, don't we? I mean, this is the same Andrew Tate who invited Lucy Williamson from the BBC to berate her in front of the cameras. And look... I found the whole thing quite funny as well, actually, because she just became, she thought she, she she came prepared. She didn't. She was basically a sheep w walking into the wolf's den. And no matter what she fired at him, uh, you can tell she was intimidated by Andrew Tate. He just came back at her with, well, to be honest, with what he came back with wasn't exactly, it was more eye rolling and, eye, and cringe inducing than anything else. And I know some fellow content creators in my sphere were making videos about it i was i just thought the whole episode was pathetic and amusing for different reasons but honestly folks if you weren't aware that andrew tate now thinks he's one of us he's got another thing coming he certainly couldn't employ a comic book artist or an esteemed comic book writer uh, like joe casada to do his comic for him why why would they be part of his matrix no it's not happening he's had an ai do his comic himself because i couldn't find out any information about who's drawn the comic who's written it nothing so ladies and gentlemen if this video was in some way informative if it was educational to you today make sure you leave a like make sure you hit that subscribe button only if you want to and if you were me and if i were you you might want to come back for the next video. <laughs> you see, the problem with the Western world is that they want me to pay my taxes. Whereas if I'm in Romania, if I'm in Kazakhstan, if I'm in Azerbaijan, I don't have to pay taxes. Why is that, you may ask? It's because I have good relations with the president of all those countries. We're all involved, <laughs> interconnected with corruption. Now, because of this, I've been able to access and buy several Bugattis. <laughs> now, how? how? You may ask, how do you afford? How do you get the money itself? Well, that just comes from my several, you know, exploits and pursuits in the world, and essentially I've conquered the world over the last year. <laughs>